In this video, we'll learn about the product and quotient rules for taking derivatives. So here's the product rule. Unfortunately, it's a little bit more complicated than we might hope. If we have a product of two functions, we might hope that the derivative is simply the product of the derivatives, but that's not the case. If y equals f of x times g of x, then we take the first function times the derivative of the second, plus the derivative of the first times the second. Okay, let's see this in action. So here's my first function, f of x, and here's my second function, g of x. So according to my product rule, y prime is going to be f times g prime plus f prime times g. So f is simply the f function, I don't change it at all, just leave it the way it is, x to the fourth minus 2x plus 7, times the derivative of g, so g is 3x squared minus 5x, so the derivative of that is 6x minus 5, plus, now f prime is the derivative of the f function, that's going to be 4x cubed minus 2, and then finally the g function is the original g that we had, so that's 3x squared minus 5x. Now, if they ask us to simplify this, then we'll need to multiply all this stuff out, collect like terms, and make it into a nice polynomial. But unless they specifically say to simplify, we can just leave it like this. The quotient rule is similarly more complicated than we might hope. Again, if we had a fraction of two functions, we might hope that we could just take the derivative of the top and the derivative of the bottom, but unfortunately that's just not going to give us the right answer. So here's an example. Again, to help yourself out when you're starting out, call the top function f of x, and the bottom function g of x, and then simply fill into your quotient rule formula. So here's our quotient rule formula, and now all we have to do is fill in the information. So on the top, we have the derivative of f, which in this case is going to be 2x minus 3, times g, which is just x minus 1, minus the top function, which is x squared minus 3x, times the derivative of the bottom function. The derivative of x minus 1 is 1. Remember, the derivative of x is 1, and the derivative of 1 is 0. And then we divide all that stuff by the bottom function, g of x, x minus 1 squared. Now, just like with the previous example, if they ask us to simplify this, then we could multiply out the top, try to see if we can find any common factors to divide out. But unless they ask us to do that, then we can leave it the way it is. One note about simplifying, though, when we want to simplify this fraction, you might be very tempted to take this x minus 1 on the top and divide it out with the x minus 1 on the bottom. But remember that when we divide out things with fractions, we have to have a factor of the entire top. And we don't have any x minus 1 factors in this term. So that means that we can't divide out this x minus 1 with this x minus 1. So if you are simplifying, just try to avoid that simple mistake. Now you might have recognized in the previous example that the quotient rule is pretty complicated. There's a lot of steps that you have to take and it's easy to get them mixed up. So one rule of thumb is that we'd like to try to avoid the quotient rule whenever possible. So with this function here, we see a fraction, we might be thinking quotient rule, but before we take any derivatives, I can simplify this and by breaking it up into two separate fractions. So I can write it as 8x cubed over x squared minus 1 over x squared. And I can simplify that even further x cubed over x squared is simply x, and I can write 1 over x squared as x to the minus 2. And what you might recognize here is that we don't need any fancy quotient rule to take the derivative now. y prime, well the derivative of 8x is 8, and the derivative of x to the minus 2 is minus 2 x to the minus 3. I can simplify that a little bit, and we're done. Now that's the answer that we would have gotten from the quotient rule. It might not have looked exactly like that, but it could have been simplified into that. But this way we get the correct answer without having to work so hard. 